Welcome to A Taste of the Ancient World. Today is a special day. We're having a food tasting using isovatida and sylphium to test the different spice on Roman recipes. Now, isovatida is the resin that you know from Parthian chicken. We've done a film about Parthian chicken. It's a resin that comes from Iran. The Romans used it quite a lot. It's very pungent, it's quite sulfurous. Sylphium, on the other hand, is supposed to be extinct, of course, but a new scientific discovery, only recently reported, has suggested that it's, it's actually growing in Turkey. A scientist called Mamut Miski invited me to Istanbul to cook with this spice to see whether we could work out whether it really is sylphium or not. We are still trying to work that out. It's a very special spice, it's a resin, it smells delicious, does it taste delicious? We have to work that out. So what I've done is made many recipes using isovatida for, and then using drudina to see whether we can compare the two spices. And I have special guests. We have archeologists, food historians from around the world to come to taste these recipes to see whether or not they can help me to judge whether or not we have sylphium or not. So it's a very special day. We're really looking forward to it. It's very exciting. So watch the space. So my guests today, some are friends, some are colleagues, they all have a specialty in food archaeology and particularly Roman food. I'm Ken Albala, a food historian at the University of the Pacific in Stockton, California. And um, there are a few living people who have translated Apicius. Chris and Sally have, I have also, <laughs> so it's, they're almost the same though. So anyway, thanks. Thank you. So, Ken Albala is a professor in a university in America. He specializes in food history. He's written widely about Apicius and about medieval food generally. And I know that he cooks Roman food a lot. And I know he has insights. He has himself translated Apicius. And so I am looking forward to his insights particularly. I'm Scott Cochran. Uh, I teach Latin uh, at, at at Sigel High School and uh, uh, Middle Tennessee State University, both in Tennessee. Um, and that's kind of brought me this direction. Thank you. So Vicki York Edwards is a colleague. Uh, she, she did her research in aspects of obesity in the medieval period. She's a food historian and I've known her for many years and we've always talked about Roman food and I think she would have insights that will help us. Hi, I'm Vicky York Edwards. Uh, my background's in archaeology. I did a PhD looking at obesity in 18th and early 19th century London. But my heart's always been with Roman 
uh, stuff. My first job was for Colchester Archaeological Trust, digging there. <laughs> Farrell Monaco is a colleague, a friend, I think now, and she specialises particularly in Roman bread, but she also is very interested in Roman food generally, and she writes a blog about Roman food, which I find really useful and really interesting. And she has lots of insights about how Roman food should taste. Sure. Uh, my name is Farrell Monaco. I'm a Roman archeologist and I specialize in recreating and researching Greek and Roman breads. Excellent. Ollie. Oli Moritzson is not a friend or a colleague because I've not met him yet. He's coming fresh to our tasting. He's a gastrophysicist. It's a wonderful concept. He specializes in how things taste and smell, looking at the chemical components of foods and how they are experienced in the nose and mouth. So I'm really looking forward to insights from Oli. My name is Ola Moritzson. I'm a physicist and I'm a professor of gastrophysics and culinary food innovation. And I'm passionate about taste of food, in particular Japanese food, but also ancient food. And my particular interest is umami, fifth taste. Oh, wonderful bunch. Hi, my name is Christopher Grocock. I teach Latin at Beedale School, and I have the privilege of being married to Sally Granger. <laughs> Yay! There you go. Right, so. This is our first wet sauce. Sal, so, do you want to introduce yourself for the uh, sake of continuity? Oh, good heavens. Uh, um, my name is Sally Granger. I'm a Roman food historian and archaeologist, and I specialise in, in the recipes in Apicius. And along with Christopher, my husband, we have translated Apicius. Some of so, so, we start, we yeah. finally well, got yeah. so welcome to the Silphium tasting, or or possibly or possibly the Silphium tasting. We don't know whether it's Silphium. The story is that long before COVID, I read an article online by a gentleman called Mamut Miski, who said he thought he had discovered Silphium. He's a Turkish um, pharmacist. Pharmacologist, sorry. And he's looking for drugs and he specializes in ferula. <laughs> ferula is a species, about 140 in the species, some of which produce resin, some don't. Some are extremely aromatic and beautiful and, and go into, into perfume, like for instance galbanum. One produces isopatida, that stinky devil's dung spice that is so po popular in Indian food and also in Apicius in our Roman food and Silphium proper which apparently grew only in Cyrenaica in northern Libya in a, in, in a thin band of land and it became extinct according to Pliny and it was supposed to be a cure-all magical drug it was supposed to taste fabulous it was it was the height of luxury and people spent fortunes importing it um, and it died out. Many recipes in, in Apicius use it. Many recipes also use isopatida, we're fairly sure. So I said to him, shall we do some cooking experiments? He said, yes, please. I went to Istanbul. I went to the um, botanical gardens in Istanbul and I cooked these recipes that you're going to eat today uh, on a modern barbecue with all kinds of random bits of equipment that was provided for me and a huge audience of people and cameras and using a resin that was that was an early harvest and it wasn't very potent but we got a hint of something interesting and it was quite delicate it was floral the romans cooked with perfume they cooked with incense a lot and so it seems to be in that in that same area uh, and so slightly odd for us to be eating perfume the romans actually i think appreciated the smell of it as they ate rather than the taste of it as they ate which is a, an odd thing for us to appreciate um so i've i've had some success and i've had some um disappointment i want uh, in a way i want to know <coughs> For people that understand about Roman food, could it possibly be Silphium? Or are we just looking at another ferula species 
that maybe they would have used, but it's not the Holy Grail, it's not silky. The first dish is an asikia. Now, asikia is a kind of force meat, pounded prawn meat in this case, that's raw, and I've blended with it um, pepper and lovage, cumin and lhasa. And I've also, of course, made it with the isovatida resin. So we have two separate kinds of force meat. And then to go with that, we have sauces called lacerratum. Lacerratum is the term for a lacer sauce. Uh, this is simple, a simple uh, combination of a, a resin, whether it be isopatida or sylphium, dissolved in warm water and then blended with equal quantities of either fish sauce, uh, not either fish sauce, but fish sauce and vinegar and a little pepper. And this is the Drudina sauce. So I wouldn't dip the Drudina isichia into the isopatida sauce. Just, just not a good idea because I mean, what's the point? What's the point? So I will go first. Okay, not as disappointed as I was earlier. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Go for it. There is. Because I've used, I think I may have used too much. My point is, it's it's a little bitter. It's more bitter than I expected it to be. Mm. Mm. And when you say you used too much, how well, much is it actually of that particular? That is, it, this is the Drudina, and I probably would so, use one peppercorn's worth. Want that in, in there? I believe so. So that's one, one point three? one. Yeah, yeah. And one point two is the next one, right? Yeah. Yeah, the asafoetida. This is made with this is made with asafoetida, and that and that's the sauce that goes with it. Oh, understood. Okay. And the bitterness that I didn't get and in Istanbul the... was a columella that said that asafoetida was the poor man's silphium. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Is there a drastic difference? Like a... Is there? Well, there should be. Mm. I'm I'm pretty certain that's there is a drastic that's what I want to know. And something I found. It's now growing wild all over over California. That it's in a peaky all over the place. Yeah, it's just never used anymore as penny oil. Oh yes. Yeah. Occasionally there is. One or two recipes have have measures, but only of liquids, not of spices. Um, but there is a remedy using silphium that says use it, use as much as one pep peppercorn, which is which is tiny. We know that. It's like a poultice or something like that. It was, I'm not sure what it was. It was medicinal a... though, aren't they? The ones that have measurements? That's fine. Yeah, so. Mm. So, you know, the bitterness kind of rounds out after a minute. Mm. It fills your mouth in a nice way, but, it, but when I... it hits, it's like, oh! I know. Bitter. And I think, I am fairly certain, see, that is basically vinegar and fish sauce. Equal quantities okay. with the herbs. <laughs> I think some of the recipes are actually designed for isovatida and some for sylphium. This one, this Asikia, is actually, I think, designed for the Hing, for the, for the ice for tea. I've, I've written Hing on all the cards simply because I'm writing ice for tea down every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. Isn't that lazy Strange or what? Spelling. Isn't that lazy? There's a second sauce that you can uh, dip with bread. I've got some bread here, the second sauce has got a lot more pepper in it. It's like <gasps> serious pepper going on. That, yeah, that's, uh, that's coming out in a minute when I heated it up. But it's it's interesting. Um, I've still got that bitterness lingering. One of the things I found in Istanbul that when we roasted with Drudina, uh, it disappeared. So we've got roasted quail shortly, not quite yet. Uh, 
and the most successful way to consume it was in a sweet um, wet sauce. So we're having lamb with, with with prunes in a kind of a tagine, and I have high hopes that that's probably going to be the best one. But this is I'm a little disappointed by that. But there we are. But that's what we're here for. Yeah, quite lovely. Uh -oh. I have to say, yeah, I have to say, what if it's like, um, you know, it's like a poisonous nettle or something? I was having a look at sort of the medical treat, you know. You we didn't sign a waiver. Mm. It's Europe. <laughs> Sally's already eaten. There are quite a few things that Europe. people used to eat in this country that we don't anymore for oh, good reason. Tansy. Tansy being, yeah, a big one. Even Rue, there's warnings on now. Mm. Mm -hmm. This will induce abortion. <laughs> And something I found that's now growing wild all over, over California that is in a peak all over the place, yeah, it's just never used anymore, is penny oil. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, thanks, Right. Okay. So, wafted about the room. There we are, hand it round. And in... It smells gorgeous. It does. Like See, frankincense. Uh, yes. Not that different. No, exactly. And if they're looking uh, oh, wow. somehow to smell it before they eat it. You know, I have a feeling I've eaten frankincense I have a somewhere Chris. and it was mm -hmm. bitterness like this. Oh, yes. Chris. Chris. I mean, there's recipes. Maybe yeah. There we are. Mm. I can't remember oh, who I says it. it. So it's, it's good, isn't it? It's likely to be pretty. I love it. That it's wonderful. In consuming really perfume, wonderful. they're happy to deal with the bitterness because they want the smell as they eat. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure that's in plenty. Do you remember that Byzantine dish you did? Yes. We ended up buying... It's lovely. What did we end up buying from the Rockies? It was the only place we could get it without gunpowder. Seriously. Oh, oh, oh Frank, um, um, uh, Costas and Spickenau. Costas and Spickenau. One of them him. is Swasoria <clears throat> Lapa in, in its formal name. I can't remember which one is Swasoria Lapa and which is, which is Costas. Mm. Um, but yes, it's an incense. That if, if you buy those incense sticks to burn at parties and, you know, to hide the smell mm. of other things, Not other resins. Us. As you do. <laughs> As you do. Um, uh, that is exactly what is in those sticks, spicanard and costas, mm. and they're both roots. Oh, no, one's a, one's a resin, one's a root. Mm -hmm. And I bought it from a from a place that was selling the ingredients to make incense sticks, but they didn't put the saltpeter in. That's right. And I used it to cook a meal, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody survived. So. Look, some some <laughs> Hellenic society up in London, and it was a, they no, it's all right. It doesn't matter, does it? Yeah. <laughs> so yes. bury them in the yard. Okay, so this is our second source. And then the second source is more complicated. The second source is using pepper, parsley seed, dried mint, nasa resin again, honey, vinegar and fish sauce. And of course I've made that one with drudina and one with isopatida. And I'm much less disappointed because I can taste it. So Sally, you said you did some of these sources over the last few days. Yes. And you find they've been changing over the time? Um, I got distracted when that was being reheated. It may have concentrated too much. This one, I made sure it didn't overboil. And so it's the consistency I want it to be. But you do boil all of them? Yes, um, yeah, not, not boil. No, but high Just, temperature. Yeah, yeah. And did you taste as they sort of as it dissolved when it was a lower temperature? Is there any? Oh, you think there's a di well? I don't know. I mean, some some of these aroma compounds come out at different temperatures, wow. and it depends on what you like. Mm. It's, uh, no, but if if at a much lower temperature, there's more of a flavour. That's very interesting. 
Roman foodies served um, sort of blood heat. It's not served hard because they're eating with their fingers. Over there. I think the <clears> point <throat> is where it's been heated high and then cooled, or it's been cold, cold all the time because some of the volatiles would go at high temperatures. Will go yeah. right. And so this is very much like tea. I mean, you, yes. You have yes. to steep it in different ways depending on which aroma <laughs> compounds and wow. taste compounds you want to get out. Yeah. And uh, see, all those cooks that had experience of cooking with silky and proper I see the laser in there. were were Greek. They weren't Roman because by the time the Roman cooks get going, it's all gone. Pretty sure. Yeah. So they've just got hanging. They've just got hanging, yes. Alright, I'm going to Do eat more recipients. This one's got laser. There is chicken to go. Yeah. Okay. Let's straight. Let's go. It'll work as well. Nice. Excellent. So what does anybody think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like You like it. Here to work. Yeah. Exactly. Can you taste something exactly. that is mm. that is uh, um Elusive, so we say. Mm. Mm. That's much more successful. And it's floral. There's something floral in there, isn't there? Mm. The next dish is the turtle doves, except that we couldn't get turtle doves. They're not easy to get. So we have we have quail. And the quail have been marinating in a very simple mixture. Uh, you open them up and dress them carefully. Pound pepper, larsa, a little fish sauce, pour it into the doves and so marinate them and then so roast them. So we're going to spit roast them. One with one with Drudina and one with isopatida. That's, that's, that's the first sauce and that's the second sauce. So this is the same sauce, but made with isopatina. Same volume of the resin. It has a, it has a very different kind of a flavour to it. Yeah. It's got that kind of airiness. Pumpkin or turn? This is this is a this is a gourd. It's a um, it's actually a um, butternut squash. Oh yeah. It should have been uh, a Mediterranean gourd, but we can't get them, so we stick with what we can get. Fair. Quail is gorgeous. Is it? Yeah. Can you taste it? Yeah, well, I've gone and dipped by accident, so now I'm going to have naked necks. I'll have it just as. <laughs> What well, I've dipped, so I'm coming back now to just have it roasted as is. Mm. Okay. Mm. One one I did wrong. Yeah, that's fabulous. Just to Judina, the We're not. Steak. We're not getting. Oops, Daisy. We're not we're not getting. getting. No, we're not getting. Yeah. So that over here. I'm not getting anything. That's the quail. That's the quail. Mm. It's nice as quail goes, but. And, 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 and,
I, I, I melted um, a couple of peppercorns worth into water and added that to the marinade, which is fish sauce. So fish sauce and the Giordina liquid and pepper. I left them to marinate for two days. Good. Beautiful. It's very much there. You don't even have to melt it all. It's mild, but it's top. there oh. in the meat. Yeah, the marinade. Um, <clears throat> but it's, it's definitely all water soluble. They're not oil it's seemingly. Mm -hmm. Seemingly not, no. Um, let's think. One recipe specifically says melt your dirt in it. <laughs> the okay. And not in oil. It so, might be interesting to so just try to see if you can extract some oil. Oh, okay. In oil. Should, I, yeah, should we have a go? Let's have a go. See what you want. Yeah, compare it yeah. a little bit in, in water and a little mm. bit in oil. Yeah. Do you marinate no. the bird, Sally, or Two do days. you dress it? Two, Two days. days. Okay. Sitting. Beautiful. I'm still not. I'm still not getting. I'm still not getting this 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 so-called perfume that we're supposed to be finding. So. And it's, it's, I've just had a few pieces and I'm wondering where the ice of a tea is. Oh. Mm. What is this I'm smelling? <laughs> That's the root of Drudina. Oh. And if you've got anything in there, if you've got that smell, that's it. Which is, it's so elusive to get it to taste in food and the, le the last two dishes are are wet sauces and I think that's when it, it comes mm. up. That's interesting. Isn't it an interesting smell? That's what we're... That's caramelly. What it's caramelly. caramelly. That's, yeah. what, that's what we're looking for and we still haven't been able to get. Oh, fantastic. From Because well, nice. this usually stinks. Yes. Like, like it's a high health yeah. No, I know, but when it's, like, when it's in that raw state like that, it doesn't. It's kind of pleasant. It's yeah. a little sulfur brimstone, but mm. but when Ooh. it's in powder form, it's like it takes up the it's, whole it's kitchen. Already, it's already been roasted. Yeah. Mm. Then it comes and back that's, that's on weeks. It comes back for weeks it, on you. Yeah, exactly. Taste, I want. Can I just taste? Can I just? Yeah, go for it. Is that a peppercorn, the one you got there? That's the size. Oh, it's oh, in there. Just a piece of root. You take a big huff, it's in there. The pungence. No, no, but I mean, is that about the, the amount you oh, use? Oh, yes. Yeah, I would eat, say even smaller, but um, I made double recipe. This is still up in the kitchen. She is. Smells good, sir. Yeah, does it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have the first of the two um, wet sauces. I tasted it myself. Yeah. I should have. Let me just uh, grab a fork and have a go. So it's a gourd, cucurbits, in the style of Alexandra, which basically means date syrup, pine kernels, um, defrutum which is a boiled grape juice. There's oil and wine, there's, there's vinegar, there's fish sauce, there's oil. Uh, let's have a go. Mm. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm more pleased. <coughs> to have a go. temperature is that at the moment? In relation to what? Talking about yes, uh, well, uh, obviously I was um, bringing it to heat. Mm. I should have stopped, but I got distracted. The phone went That's rather that's nice. You're doing the wild sheep last, though? Yes, wild sheep last. I'll bring some, some water, we can wash our forks in water. Here, I'll get that. Will you? <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's much more neurological. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it
Yeah. 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 Oh my God! You should look back on his work. Oh, you get a little bit of feedback. Oh, it would be wonderful. I am. Thankfully, I had my big family trip already planned, but I moved things around. How's it going, sir? Not too bad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coal from one fly to the other, just to make sure that these get warm. But as we've has already discussed, I need not to get them too hot because maybe the volatile walls are going. And maybe what we need to do is just bring it to room temperature. Mm -hmm. So, I need to bear that in mind. I'm not getting distracted down there is the issue. But the funny thing is that, uh, just looking at the ordinary meal, there's so much more vegetable. So, I have a question. Is there a dish in this that you have cooked and you know you cooked it exactly as intended and it just didn't taste good? It was just like, this is not... Or just really wasn't that good because I'm. But the I first still... sauce. No, 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 no. Out of a piquet, something. Out of a piquet, out of a piquet, generally. Oh wow. Like something you thought, what, what the hell were they thinking of? This is so gross. I'm hard pressed, but I haven't cooked as many of the recipes. You mean you haven't yet? No, I haven't yet. I haven't, but, but I'm wondering, like, is there something in there that really just. I still got the Dormouse to do, haven't I? Dormouse was. I have eaten Dormouse. You have? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We went, we went, we went, we went wow. to Split to a conference, and the island of Bratch off the coast of Split is where there is a, 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 a tradition and a festival. And they're wild and they're caught in the in the hills. And we turned up in the spring and uh, our hotel concierge arranged the trip to the centre of Bratch. Just knowing that you might be interested in Dormice. Well, because, we, because he said, well, why are you here? And we told him you know, who we are and yeah. what we did. So, we arranged it. so they were killed out of sight within about uh, five minutes of of them going on the split. It's basically a furry tailed rat. It's a rodent. Yeah. It's nothing more. It's yeah. not yeah. the glisclis. The glisclis that sits in the teapot in Alice in Wonderland <laughs> is a little baby furry cute little thing. It's a completely different not completely different but they're both dormice, right? No. Because yeah, there are different kinds of dormice. It's not just the one. So these are bigger or they're smaller? Mm. I mean, it's mouse size, you know. No, like well, that's squirrel. not a mouse size. Yes, it's 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 rat size. Oh, I mean, so it was so, so big, yeah. and the tail was almost the same same length. Honey and poppy seeds. <coughs> no, they just spit roasted them for us. Yeah, ungutted. Yeah, mm -hmm. ungutted. <laughs> oh my God. Let them do all the work of getting back. Yeah, exactly. And in the spring, where we were there, they were scrawny. They were really scrawny. How do you make people really feel? Um, I don't want people to be lots of press. So Alexandrian style gourd. We're using butternut squash because that's the kind of gourd we can get here. Uh, so you boil the gourd and you press the water out of it and you sprinkle it with salt and you arrange it in a dish. You pound pepper, cumin, coriander seed, mint, larsa, sylphium. You pour on vinegar, you add dates and pine nuts. Now I've added date syrup for ease. Um, then you pound them together. Then you flavor with honey and vinegar, fish sauce, defrutum, the wonderful reduced grape syrup and oil and you pour o over the gourd and bring it to heat. So again, we've made that one with Judina and one with Isofatida. Mm. 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 
It's a lot of finger eating. It's a lot of, of, of food being cut into relatively small pieces. You see it as display. You pour the sauce on top of it, but all you or you have a separate, you know, those little cups of mine. That, you have a little cup of sauce yeah. and you have small pieces of food and you dip into the sauce okay, because you've got no, all you have is potentially a knife but only in a in a, um, a sort of a working environment with working people because people are reclining and reclining while lying down on a couch all of all they've got is one hand to eat so everything is small for them and to the formal meal each would have their own that's it it depends on the um, I think they'd probably share a pot of sauce and they'd have a dish of, 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 of meat cut into pieces and a dish of sauce and they'd pick one up and put it in the room. This is wild lamb in a hot sauce. Um, to, uh, to provide for the wild lamb, we've, we're actually using hoggit, which is that wonderful phrase for... It's not lamb and it's not mutton, it's somewhere in between. It's over two years at least. So the lamb is over two years old. So not quite mutton. Mutton, hog it. It's hog it. And it's locally grown. And I saw them in a field, so they're as happy a lamb as you could as you could meet. You conversed with each one. So the lamb is pepper lovage, cumin, dry mint, thyme. Drudina resin in this in the in the case of the one on the far right uh, far end um, mm. softened uh, um, softened damsons it's it prunes honey wine fish sauce vinegar and it says passum for colour but I've put defrutum for colour anybody who yeah. knows recipes knows that that was a misprint somewhere yeah. down the line yep. and and then it's supposed to be stirred with a bundle of oregano and mint which I think is weird. Oh, <laughs> did you did you read um, was it in Theophrastus was talking about using silphium by oh, shaking it yes. and hitting it uh, yes. to flavor it yes, in that so way? Oh, in the manner. stalks. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like wiping and shaking. And silphium harvested. Right. So this is the, this is the one I have high hopes for. So let me go for it. This is the one that worked the best in Istanbul. It's lovely, it's nice, nice sauce. Still not, I still haven't got my elusive smell and taste. What are you looking for? What, what well, are you aiming, you, if, if you, what are you trying to replicate? Describe it. If you get kind of a delicate floral artichoke from this, okay. which I got from that in Istanbul. So a warmer. Mm. Floral. Floral. Mm. So elusive. Okay. It's an experiment. It's, I shouldn't be disappointed. Um, okay, and you're right, Mickey, I should have had three. Can you imagine? Three separate dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Some, somehow, just cook to, some more. Just, just cook some more. And we, then, we'd have, then we'd have been able to work out what was, what was missing in, from one to the other. But, but a flavour that is that elusive. Well, exactly. It's not, we're not. Easy to capture. No, and I mean, it, uh, it, is it, are we? And if you haven't we, cooked for it your whole life, you don't no, know how much No, 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 yeah. no, exactly. Disappointing. Wow. So we are, we're going to, um, ah, no, that's not it. We're going to, we're going to burn some galbanum. Make a nice smell. Go for it. Taste that one. Let's try again. Okay, spend the entire day looking at every single object. Right? It's my greatest pleasure. But mm. 
then you've got like it's good, isn't it? It is great. Oh, <laughs> it's the best. It's like a library, like when you go into yes. like, oh, like the library at Trinity mm. College in Dublin. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It's deep nice. breath. So that's the one. So which one should we try first? Though? I've got the yeah, I got I got the labels mixed up. This is ice of Atida. If I can taste it's it. Supposed to be the substitute for the other, but it is in this case. And the final dish of all, because there is a final dish, is pull and parthica. We've made parthian chicken again with isobatida. And we've not bothered to make it with a silphine because there's no point. It tastes fabulous with isobatida and that's what we should do. So this, I've made a large dish of this so everybody can fill up after, after tasting. So a few pound pepper and lovage and a little caraway. You pour on fish sauce, flavour with wine. Arrange the chicken pieces in a ceramic dish, pour the sauce over the chicken, then you dissolve fresh larsa in warm water. Actually, you dissolve isopatida in, in warm water and you put it straight away over the chicken and cook it, sprinkle with pepper and serve. And that's, that's our dishes. So these are our figs from our fig tree. So the tank is still got gas in it. Ready? Like okay. mm. Hands up those who would are able to open them. You got greasy fingers. <laughs> <laughs> So we've come to the end of our day. It's been exciting. It's been adventure, a, re a real adventure. I don't know what I expected. I expected to find that spice more obvious and it was still elusive. It was still quite subtle, but it was there and it was there particularly in the lamb. Disappointed with the first sauces that we, we delivered. They were too bitter. And I suspect that's because I made them too early. We need to make these sauces immediately and taste them immediately. Ollie's wonderful information about how the volatile substances will decline with heat and with time. So we need to do it fresh in order to understand. Uh, but I think um, we're moving on. We've got a lot more to do. So I've got to do experiments with time and with heat in order to judge this spice. It still smells delicious. <laughs> we still, but it's still elusive. Maybe we have selfie, maybe we don't, we don't know. So the work goes on.
TikTok.